you for joining us today. We are so excited to celebrate the achievements of our colleagues and present the 2021 Ask Awards of Excellence. Every year, Ask recognizes exemplary service and outstanding achievements in three categories, Service Coordinator of the Year, Affordable Housing Team of the Year, and Affordable Housing Innovative Program of the Year. Before we get to the awards presentation, I would like to take a moment to thank the awards committee. We had several outstanding nominees in the award categories this year, and the committee had the difficult task of reviewing and impartially scoring the nominations that determined the winners. A very special thanks to Martha Miranda of Human Good, Erica Torres of Human Good, Franchelle Mendoza of GFB Management, L'Oreal Trammer of National Church Residences, Leela Hale of Chapel House, Wendy Spearing of SPM Alabama, Shannon Atchison of Episcopal Place, one and two, and Linda Coleman, award chair of Human Good. Each of this year's winners embodied service in a major way and went above and beyond to adjust to the challenges brought about because of COVID-19. Our first award recognizes Judith Thermidor, resident wellness director at Blue Edge Co-op in Ros Roslindale, Massachusetts, as the 2021 Service Coordinator of the Year. Judith combined her formal education as a medical doctor in Mexico and France and translation experience to uplift and support the area's Haitian Creole community. Judith demonstrates a coolness under fire and always finds a solution to a problem. She anticipated the need for trauma support programs as co-op members had neighbors and friends fall ill or pass away from COVID-19. Judith was nominated by her supervisor, Brenda Carney, who said, for Judith, she isn't about going above and beyond. She is being true to Judith. That is what is so remarkable about her and why she truly is so deserving of this recognition. Judith partnered with Tech Goes Home, a technology training class that provided 10 courses and laptop computers to participants for $50. She became an instructor of the course and educated 50 of their 80 members of the co-op. She was instrumental in the development of their pharmacy outreach program, which assisted members with medication reviews and safety tips. Judith provided a list of her residents most commonly used medications and was available to translate between medical staff and residents. She collaborates with members of the community to bring multiple programs a week to her property, including yoga, tai chi, behavioral health, and fall prevention. Judith keeps residents socially engaged by leading a walking club and organizing Zoom socials, outdoor coffee hours during the pandemic, and live musical concerts where members could listen from their windows. Thank you, Judith, for your dedication and compassion for your residents. Share with us a little bit about what inspired you to serve others. It's a great honor to be recognized by American Association of Service Coordinator Awards of Excellence Committee, I want to say thank you in the name of all service coordinators who have made important contribution to the population that we serve, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. I want to point out a very well-known phrase uh, in the United States Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Enjoyment of life is a core value for the men and women living in the United States. As service coordinator, it's more than providing medical resources, transportation, a play for food stamps, my main goal is flourish the member and improve life. It's our mission. In other words, it's about human dignity. Our members, it's a long life history of inequality, poverty, violence, punishment, no justice. Every time I serve a member, with low literacy level, they can sign the names. They don't speak English. Physical declining, cognitive impairment. At the same time, also, 
I still have the courage to see the human being behind this member. That's my passion every day when I wake up to go to work. Uh, I have partnership, also age strong commission, especially with the COVID-19. Call, emails, what do you need? Provide resources, uh, new resources, uh, new partnerships, uh, new programs to keep members strong and active. Housing is a human right. And employees who serve members in housing, we all promote human dignity, health equity, and social inclusions. Thank you very much, especially to all CSI management staff, to Brenda Kearney as my supervisor. She's my unconditional support. She's very patient. I'm learning a lot from her. Uh, and uh, thank you again to my partnerships. Thank you to Axe. You are absolutely an inspiration, not only to all the service coordinators across the country, but I know to your residents as well. And I hope that everyone who's listening today can feel your passion like I do. I can feel the passion that brings you to work every day to fulfill the mission of, you know, being a service coordinator and being that person to your residents to improve their quality of life, their dignity, their respect, all of those things. Um, it's so much bigger than just providing the services, as you said. It is so much bigger. And it sounds like the residents at your property are beyond fortunate to have such a wonderful soul helping them to live with dignity and respect and honor as they age in place. So thank you so much, Judith. We are so proud of you and we are so excited to honor you as the service coordinator of the year for 2021. Keep doing the great work and keep um, reaching out to us for the support that you need. That is what we're here for. We are a team and we're so proud of you. Our second award recognizes the hard work and collaboration of service coordinator, Robbie Jowers and property manager, Sherry McClelland of Woodland Homes in Lexington, Tennessee. The 2021 Affordable Housing Team of the Year, commonly known as the Ladies of Woodland Homes, often walk the community to say hello and ask if their residents need anything. These ladies were nominated by Rachel Horton, Quality Assurance Coordinator at Home Care by Wesley. Rachel said, these ladies rely on each other more than just professionally, but personally in a way that shows a stunning example of a friendship that would never have been if it weren't for their sameness and purpose. A resident said, they work hard to help us feel secure, cared for, and most of all, respected as we age. Robbie has lived in the community for a long time. Sherry moved from Florida and immediately began making connections in the community. The team worked to establish a food pantry through community donations. Now a local, local grocery store makes regular contributions to their food pantry. They explain options for healthcare in detail to residents and have a, have a remarkable 95% of their residents vaccinated. They work to beautify the property by replacing garbage cans and dumpsters, cleaning gutters, painting, and providing picnic tables in communal spaces. They transformed a community room into a beautiful activity, activity hub that included a popcorn popper, board games, books, and food. They raised $500 for tablets for upcoming senior computer classes through a resident-driven yard sale. They've provided a cost savings of $500,000 for residents last year. Congratulations, Robbie and Sherry. The residents at Woodland Homes are so very lucky to have you. You both have worked together for some time. How do you approach your work as a collaborative team? We talk to the residents on a regular basis because many of our ideas come from our community. We've got village style apartments about uh, on 10 acres and only 60 residents in a rural uh, community. And our uh, outreach is a little more challenging than in the metro areas. In the metropolitan areas, they have a lot more resources, I guess you'd say. We do very well because when Robbie's off, I kind of take a little bit of charge and then 
kind of inform her what's going on. So our communication is really, really good. I believe that by communicating with each other and keeping both of us informed, we work really well doing that. And then when I'm not here or I'm on like a meeting or something, Robbie does the same thing of what she could let me know. She lets me know about residents. So it's it's kind of all working together and it works really well for us. Like Sherry says, the teamwork uh, is what helps us get so much done. And uh, without Golden Cross Senior Ministries and our uh, faith-based organizations in the community, we, we would have really struggled to get through the COVID time. What you guys describe as the teamwork aspect, especially across um, the two different professions, is exactly what we want to see, right? It is such a um, beautiful thing when you see two individuals collaborate for the purpose of the residents, um, even when you have different roles to fulfill on the property. What do you think that your teamwork really brings to the quality of life of those who are living at your site? I always think that the job we do, I always think about myself and when I get to be older, what we would like for us to be treated like. So it's it's like a, a common goal for me to make sure they are taken care of and Robbie feels the same way that we all could take care of these residents like we would wanna be treated when we get that, that age. It's, it's a blessing taking care of them. Golden Cross Senior Ministries uh, assist us in 30, it's actually a total of over 30 properties in bingo prizes, uh, outings. Um, they, when there were uh, shortages of Lysol and hand sanitizer and mask and just anything that we needed during the COVID lockdown, uh, they, they assisted us in providing that. And without them, we, our job will be much, much harder. So I can't say enough about uh, Golden Cross Senior Ministries and, and their assistance and the management of uh, Wesley Living. They even, they even provided us tools to make it easier, even through COVID with like trivia games and making sure they were able to get little prizes and they would search by themselves through our community. So um, it, it just provides a little bit more of a, uh, socialization that we couldn't do through the COVID epidemic. Um, and there were any new ideas, Golden Cross always has helped us. So it's, it's our blessing to have them as well here with us. That's wonderful. I think, you know, one of the, one of the most telling um, signs of a good partnership, a good relationship is when you go through something like COVID-19 together. Um, I would imagine that you both got closer during that time by working more closely together. And I know that your residents benefited from both of you being there. So I'm just so appreciative um, of your story and how well you guys work together. I have one final question. I'm curious what this award will mean for you all and for your property and your residents. And how will you share with your residents that you've been awarded this? I hope that there's a plan of that because they should know. We are so blessed to work with our seniors here. It's our honor to work with them. It, it means so much to us. We care for our residents just like they were our own family members. The care we provide is, is my pleasure and is a very part of our belief system. That's what I really believe why me and Robbie work really well together because our belief systems are the same. Our team here at Woodland Homes will always go above and beyond the call of duty. Each one of these, of team, our team deserves the very best. So. Within our team and our residents, I think that it goes back to treating everybody the way we want to be treated, and it's my blessing to get this award. Are there any other thoughts that you guys have about how to keep your residents, how you guys were successful in keeping your residents motivated during this really, really challenging time that you've come through? <laughs> Communication through us, focusing on them. Um, making them part of whatever's going on. They needed people to listen to them, um, to understand what they were going through as well. So I think the communication part of it through what me and Robbie had to offer at that point in time made a big difference. The loving, caring, the, the putting things together like trivia or hanging things on their doors or trying to do things that we only could do, which they realized that they, we were still going out of our way to try to help them through the, the bad time that they were having. So I think just the communication was a main part for helping them, being there for them, hearing them, listening to them. 
Fortunately for us, out of our 60 residents, we only lost one. I, I think we we're, were really blessed to only lose one and keep everybody well. And um, we're, we're pretty t- tickled with the turnout for the COVID vaccine. And I'm a retired public health nurse. So uh, I guess I didn't give them any option. I just said, okay, here's what we're going to do. But I, I did uh, uh, listen to them if they declined the vaccine. Of course, that's their their patient right. But uh we encouraged it strongly uh, because of their age and their comorbidities, but it uh, it was an experience that uh, we'll never forget. That is absolutely true. And I'm sure it's an experience that your residents will never forget either, but with positive thoughts around the leadership that you both provided to them during that time and will continue for, for years to come um, as the remarkable affordable housing team that you are. Um, I just want to say thank you for everything that you do for your residents. Um, Thank you for being here with us today. Um, And congratulations again for being the 2021 Affordable Housing Team of the Year for ASP. Our last award recognizes an innovative and impactful partnership that started in Rockland, California. It is my pleasure to announce Rolling Oaks Nursing Intern Program as the 2021 Affordable Housing Innovative Program of the Year. Resident Wellness Director Pamela Galloway created the program and has maintained it for the last three years. Rolling Oaks Nursing Intern Program pairs graduate nursing students with low-income older adults for a successful intergenerational program. Nurse interns are assigned volunteer residents in the I Wish program. Nurses make weekly visits to assess social, medical, and behavioral needs. Pamela Galloway has been instrumental in creating and maintaining the program for the last three years. Bronwyn Fields, assistant professor at California State University, Sacramento said, Pamela's comprehensive knowledge of residents' strengths and needs ensures continuity of care, even as students rotate through the community each semester. A resident at Rolling Oak said, the students bring joy, good energy and happiness to me. These students are smart, caring and very helpful. The nursing students are a bright light, show eagerness to learn, helpfulness, and they make me feel better when they are here. Rolling Oaks in Rockland, California partnered with two local universities, the University of California Davis and the California State University Sacramento to start the pre-licensure nursing program. Student nurses must complete 90 clinical hours over an academic term while at Rolling Oaks. They've worked with six affordable housing communities under Volunteers of America's Northern California and Northern Nevada to initiate similar programs at their properties. Nurses learned empathy skills through active listening, learned to navigate community systems of care and use secondary language skills to connect to residents. Before and after resident surveys show an increase in their satisfaction and an increased sense of community. Nurses led senior exercise classes weekly, Tai Chi for arthritis, fall prevention with certified instructors, and a walking club. Residents watched student presentations and graduations. During COVID-19, students were assigned eight to 10 residents to call each week to survey their essential supplies like food and medicine. They met with them on their patios, to use Zoom conferencing to teach classes and projected presentations in the lobby. When wildfires nearby caused residents to feel anxious, Nurse interns helped organize emergency evacuation plans through practice drills with local fire departments. Residents who had previously decided to move wanted to stay because they had students who spoke their language and helped them learn technology. Some students were able to identify symptoms of depression and PTSD in residents and connect them to therapy. Congratulations, Rolling Oaks Nursing Intern Program. Pamela, it is very clear that this program is a win-win for everyone involved. Thank you very much, Michelle, and thank you so much for allowing me to uh, talk a a little bit about this program. Um, I'm uh, very passionate about combining uh, healthcare services with um, our housing programs. I've been working as a service coordinator with Volunteers of America for uh, 15 years. And uh, several years ago, after I had been doing this for a while, I I realized that there was a missing piece to um, housing. 
Uh, obviously, housing is more than just providing uh, a roof over someone's head. So four years ago, when HUD uh, gave us the opportunity to implement the IWISH grant, which is the three-year study combining uh, health services on site at our housing properties, that grant also gave us the ability to hire a part-time registered nurse. Over the last two years, we've been able to uh, get this nursing program started at uh, three of our other properties here in, in Placer County. Um, and then, you know, we all kind of have the same goal. My goal always was that this is wonderful for Rolling Oaks. We have the, I think the best of everything. We have a wonderful clinical instructor. We have wonderful students. We have a registered nurse on staff still who is just at the top of her game and we all work together very closely. Now, can we take this, our experience and our success and see that happen in our other properties? Innovations like this are really what make service coordination such a beautiful profession. And service coordinators like you who are thinking outside that box, finding those partners, bringing them on board, and then continuing to do that work is just incredible. What is the impact that you see, you know, from start the start of this innovation and this program to your residents and how they have flourished under this innovation? And, you know, they, they have such a unique opportunity that's different than some other residents, you know, who are not able to access these nursing students. So what are the biggest benefits that you see to your residents as a result of this innovative program? Initially, we were able to do a lot of social events and uh, thinly disguised, we would, it was actually a, a health and wellness presentation, but we would disguise it as a social event. And that would bring a lot of people into the community room um, so that our, our students could start forming those relationships. Uh, when the COVID shutdown happened in March 2020, it literally, as everybody knows, there's no social events, no gathering, um, and there were people who said, you know, why are, why are we allowing these students to come in? And we were very strong advocates, and, and our administration was very strongly behind. Um, these are the medical professionals that you are going to be seen in your hospitals and doctor's office within the next six months. At a time, especially when we're dealing with a pandemic, we need to have medical professionals here. So their work during that time was so instrumental in going door to door, making sure, you know, initially they would call people, um, you know, do you have enough food? Do you need to get something, uh, you know, do you have your medicines? Uh, is there some place that you need to get? I mean, that was just so essential. I think if it's possible to say this, that the COVID shutdown actually benefited us and it really, and it benefited our program because we had to restructure what we were doing. And so it was no longer just the, you know, 15 or 20 people who would come to a social event, people who would not come to any social event, we're establishing meaningful relationships, one-on-one -on -one relationships with these young adults. And in exchange for that, those young adults were bringing to my attention and to our nurses' attention um, health issues that had been hidden or maybe mental health issues that had been hidden so that we were able to then follow up and start addressing some of those. It's just really incredible what you've developed and what you've been able to do. And it's, and it's apparent that by your story um, of, of the impact of this innovative program, that not only the residents have benefited greatly, but I would also imagine that those students benefit greatly and they take this experience as they become the healthcare professionals that they're you know, in school to become. And you're creating the next generation of um, health professionals who are sensitive to aging issues, who understand affordable housing, um, and all of the things that you do as a service coordinator. So I just want to say thank you from ASK's uh, perspective. We're so proud of you and proud of what you've developed 
and the innovation and don't stop being that innovator. I, I love an innovative mind. I love that um, when folks want to go and find solutions and create those solutions. And we are just so proud of you. And we just really appreciate what you've done here, Pamela. So congratulations to you. I can't say enough good things about the support that I get from our affiliate, um, VLA Northern California, Northern Nevada. Our um, national offices have been absolutely supportive of everything that we've been doing here, which um, obviously that is extremely important. Our property manager, our maintenance, uh, our janitors, everyone is on board with making this program successful. And so I've just been the fortunate recipient to kind of stand in front of the band, you know, and wave my baton around and, and everybody, but, you know, everybody's doing the work. It's, it's not obviously one person that never, that, that won't work. That doesn't work. It is the key to innovation and an innovative program is definitely that team aspect and everybody yes. understanding the big picture and how to make something, a vision that you had come to fruition. And we are just so proud of you for all the great work that you're doing. And we want you to continue to be innovative and, and continue to bring better services and more innovations to those residents that you're serving. So thank you so much, Pamela.